Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of What's On My Desk and today I got some real heavy hitters from Roger Dubuis. I brought a couple of double turbions and I brought the coveted Nice Up The Round Table to watch. Of course, before I jump into the watches, I'm gonna once again address the comments in the sections where you guys talk about me dropping the watches. Now, I've said this before, the sound effects of me dropping something onto the table, much like my phone, I exaggerate it very, very much because of a lavalier mic that I'm wearing. So anytime I take a watch and I drop it onto the tray, the thump noise is actually a lot louder than it really is. This is a padded tray. I don't let watches rub against each other. So by me doing this, it doesn't really hurt the watch. And I still get, get comments and guys bitching me out, so to speak, saying, Roman, the way you handle those watches, I would never buy a watch from you. Trust me, these watches are handled extremely careful. They're stored extremely well in my vault, in the dedicated trays. And I don't mess up these watches by doing these episodes. However, if you guys like for me to be, quote unquote, that white glove individual reviewer, I actually went out downstairs and picked up a white glove. I think this came with a glashute watch. So if you wanna see me as the one gloved white guy, and no, not that one, but this one, I will gladly take a glove and handle these watches with gloves, but I, I assure you, there's really, really no need for a white glove. I treat these watches carefully at any given time. And just because you guys hear thumping noises and me quote unquote dropping the watches, I'm, literally, I'm really not dropping them because again, just by setting them down like this, you can see the noise is very, very, whoop, along with the phone, is very, very exaggerated just because I am mic'd up. And there's a benefit to that. If I took this microphone off, the sound quality wouldn't be as great. And you guys would probably complain about that. So for now, I'm gonna put the white glove back in my drawer and uh, I'll do my best not to offend anyone by somehow maybe not dropping these watches as heavy by carefully setting them down. So I hope that addresses your concern. So I'm gonna start with the double turbion from Roger Dubuis. And you guys are gonna quickly tell me, wait a minute, Roman, you already did this watch on one of the episodes, and indeed I did. The reason I'm showing this one first and foremost in white gold is to sort of show you a contrast on a new piece that just came into my office in a different material. Gorgeous double turbion, completely see-through. As you can see here, I'm gonna wind this watch so you can see the machine at work. You see how this microphone picks up the noise? It's pretty good. Now that the watch is wound, I wanted to show you guys the double turbulence in action. Look at that. Just a thing of beauty, if you ask me. So I'm not gonna talk much about this watch. Instead, what I'm going to talk in the watch, I'll set this down carefully, and uh, I'm gonna pick up this guy. And look at this beauty. In fact, I should do this side by side first so you kind of can see the difference is in, indeed in the materials. Look at the difference between the two. Again, same movement. In fact, exactly the same movement. There's nothing that differs from one watch to another. It is one-to-one, -one, same case size, same design Excalibur, typical Excalibur bezel with the notches on the side of the bezel. But the difference is the use of materials here. So let's look at this guy in depth. Now the difference right away, that was white gold. This is made in titanium. So this watch is extremely light. The inner bezel is designed to look like a speedometer. If you ask me, it does look like a speedometer. And it has these gorgeous aluminum inserts on the side of the watch. Look at that. So the case itself, uh, it seems like it's a case within a case. Sort of that round aluminum part where the movement actually is housed. It seems like it's surrounded by the titanium on either side. It's black, it's DLC coated. It sort of matches up with the black notches. On the bezel, which I absolutely love, I love the red crown, how it actually plays off the red inserts and the red inner bezel. And what I love most about that is that it feels as if, even though this is not the same, but it feels like the red on the sides, it sort of connects through to the design of the dial. Two beautiful flying turbions from Roger Dubuis, just the same as the last one. Uh, you have the star over the balance wheel, which makes for a striking design, if you ask me. And the back of the watch is just as impressive. Look at this guy. Oh my God, this is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the strap. Even the strap design of this watch, just for some reason for me, screams maybe a Ferrari or Lambo or McLaren. It's just the overall look of this watch is absolutely astonishing. Uh, if you notice as I turn the watch, how the red gets kind of highlighted. Well, it's because it's a glossy finish. See, as I do that, 
where it says Raja Dubuji sort of kind of highlights itself. And that makes for an overall striking loop because the titanium is very matte. And when you look at the red inserts, especially when you put them in the right light and they sort of highlight the watch, it just makes for a striking effect, if you ask me. Now, they made a limited edition of 188 pieces of these. However, this particular watch is a limited edition of eight. And for the life of me, I still haven't figured out what this is for. If I had to guess, this was probably made for some boutique in the Asian market because of the significance of the number eight being the lucky number for the Asian world. However, if any one of you guys know why they made an edition of eight and who it was made for, please do let me know. So contrary to all belief, I don't know everything when it comes to watches and I have no idea the difference between the edition of 188 versus the eight. The watches are completely identical. Um, I've searched the internet up and down and I've yet to find actually the limited edition of eight anywhere. The only pieces that come up for sale is the edition of 188. So I'm gonna go off of that in terms of retail price. I don't know if this watch retail for more. Sometimes they do when they make such a small run or maybe this was an initial run to see how well they do and then they made a bigger run. But the retail on this watch is $264,000 and you'd be hard pressed to pick this watch up brand new for more than 30 to 35% off retail. On a secondary end, it does resell for a bit less. And unfortunately, in this episode, I'm not gonna reveal that information because this watch was actually sold this morning to a dealer who resold it to a customer. So I don't know how much he resold it to a customer for, so it wouldn't be right for me to reveal how much I sold it on a wholesale level to a dealer. But do expect the savings when it comes to these double turbines, and especially when it comes to Raja Dubuyi, just because, again, historically, Raja hasn't had that great a resale value in the past, although they've really kicked it in gear over the last couple of years and they're really climbing their way to the top and climbing very quickly. I would not be surprised to see Roger Dubuis in the top five selling brands over the next five years just because of what they make. Their movement qualities are superb. Their watchmaking is superb. Their design is superb. Look at this watch. This watch is absolutely stunning. I mean, look at this watch. I can't think of any other uh, double turbine out there, such for example, like the Brigade double turbine or any of the Grubel Forze double turbines. Uh, if anybody puts any other double turbine on the market today in front of me and puts this watch next to it, I will pick this Roger every single time. Absolutely a stunner of a watch, whether it's in titanium and aluminum or the white gold version, which is the one that I showed you in previous episodes. By the way, the one I showed you in previous episodes is long gone. This is another one that I picked up for stock and I don't think this one is gonna last much longer either. Because again, even in plain quote unquote white gold, this watch is still an absolute stunner. Guys, next I brought the Knights of the Round Table 2 from Roger Dubuis. And this is a watch where I get a lot of mixed uh, feedback from the people where they don't understand the price of a watch. Now, there's a good old saying, if you don't understand the price of something, it's probably not for you. Personally, I don't go by that saying. I think it's a bit of a snooty saying. But it kind of does go true with this particular watch, and not in terms of being snooty with someone that has a little bit of money and so on and so forth, but in terms of the amount of work and amount of artesian work and amount of effort that goes into producing this watch that is only a time watch. And you would think, why is this watch $268,000? And this is what I keep hearing from everybody yet. You cannot find one of these on the market. In fact, I dare you to get out there and try to find one of these guys. You will not find them. They made 28 of them. They sold out and they sold out quickly. And there's a reason behind it. First, let me show you this beautiful timepiece. Now, it's pretty obvious. The Knights of the Round Table depicts the King Arthur and his knights sitting around their table. I can even read what it says in the back. But for that, I'm going to need these guys. Yeah, I told you guys a few episodes before this did happen. Around this table, the bravest knights will gather in equals. They will set forth in search of adventure, righting wrongs, protecting the weak, and humbling the proud. Sound familiar? I'm sure you guys have seen this in numerous movies. To best describe this watch, I'm actually going to quote an article I read on a blog to watch. And I'll link the article below as well, their blog. I'm sure you guys know all about them. And this is what they wrote. A watch designer's job is to create a relationship between the wearer and their watch. The new Roger Dubuis Excalibur Knights of the Round Table 2, which does this in a clever way. By decorating the dial with a culturally significant diorama, the wearer is not only comfortable with an image they have seen many times before, but they're also susceptible to its potential as an emotional trigger. With a single glance, a whole gamut of feeling can be released. Pride, passion, patriotism, for example. The Roger W. Excalibur Knights of the Round Table 2 picks up where the first round table watch left off, moving the design brief in a new direction and elevating the craftsmanship to a new level. 28 pieces made. 
Each figurine takes 24 hours to hand finish after it has been cast. It took them an entire 360 some days to produce 28 of these pieces. I also love the fact that the knights are now sitting against a highly polished outer ring, which is kind of out of sight, out of mind. Uh, still the short stubby hand as they call them because you know you have to make room for the sword so to speak. A 45 millimeter heavy white gold watch holds the famous RD-821 automatic movements which, which carries the Geneva seal. A uh, very impressive movement at that and they're pretty humble by hiding the movement. It's not a see-through back. That's not the interesting part. Let's talk about the fact that this watch retails for $268,000. And is this watch worth $268,000? And what is its retail, resale value? Well, I've had two of these thus far. One brand new, which I sold for $225,000 to a client who was very happy because he couldn't find uh, this watch, period, and then nor could he find it at a discount. And believe me, I didn't get much of a discount below that, so I didn't really make a home run on this watch. And now we're talking about a pre-owned piece. Now, what is this piece going to trade at pre-owned? I would not be surprised if this fetches upwards of $200,000. There's 28 of these made. Uh, they're all sold out, and they sold out quickly. Uh, there's a customer out there that has the appreciation for finely handmade things. And there's also a customer out there that has the appreciation for complications. Most people spending upwards of $200,000 are going to reach for a tourbillon, for a perpetual calendar, or a combination thereof, or a mini repeat, or something that's complicated. Or perhaps just a simple, hard to find RM11 chronograph, which is the latest and the greatest. This, I believe, is for a client who is more humble. This, I believe, is for a client who understands and appreciates hand craftsmanships in the watch and not just the movement itself but the actual decoration of the watch or the design of the watch overall like these knights sitting around the table. The fact that there was a highly qualified craftsman that cast these little bronze figurines uh, hand polished them by hand afterwards or finished them off by hand to make them absolutely perfect and every single one of them is going to be different across the 28 watches and these things are tiny I mean each figurine is 6.5 millimeters tall I mean it's, it's it's tiny so in closing somebody who's going to buy this watch and who wants to buy this watch really really has to be in love with that idea of old school handmade craftsmanship because this is what this watch is all about it's, they could have put a tourbillon in here uh, they could have uh, made this a complicated watch. They could have made the knights move and, and give you a mechanical fee, but that's not what this watch is about. This watch is about craftsmanship. This watch is about old school craftsmanship. And to take you back to the time of King Arthur, it's really, really old school craftsmanship. So A plus on this watch, Roger Dubuis. I've always loved Roger Dubuis for what they do and what they make. And I think the Knights of the Round Table 2 takes this to the next level. Guys, that's it for me today. Last but not least, I'm going to show you what's on my wrist. And today I'm wearing a very, speaking of old, I'm wearing a very old uh, Pepsi or Rolex GMT. Uh, this is the Long E, so this is a much older watch. And you can tell by the aging of the bezel. This watch has never been polished. This watch has never been serviced. This is, it doesn't really keep good time because I haven't had the movement service, but yet, and I don't think I will anytime soon. But the patina of the bezel the wear and tear on the bracelet, the old riveted bracelet, which is what this is, and the dial is just absolutely appealing to me. It's absolutely stunning. This is a 1.6 million serial, which dates it back to 1968. So this watch is 50 years old, and a to be in this shape and to have this patent and to have this appeal, this vintage appeal, is pretty rare to find one of these guys. And if you guys watched my episode a few weeks back, the one I did with Bob Marin, remember how I told you Bob will probably end up selling me a watch? Guess what he did? And this is the watch that I took from his office that very day. Guys, that's it for me today. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Spread the word with those that you feel may enjoy this episode as much as you do. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time for more watch reviews in the video.